Welcome to this episode. We're going to be training a classifier on MNIST using PyTorch. So we're going to be going over some basic concepts like training loop, optimizer, loss function. But if you already know everything about it, just head over to the last section. You can click in the on the title on the video description here or directly on the timeline for a quick summary. In the following videos, we'll show you how to convert a PyTorch code into PyTorch Lightning which will give you a few benefits, such that training on multiple GPUs, multiple nodes, on TPUs, while Lightning is automatically logging all the relevant information for you, is making checkpoints such that you can restart your training a later time. More about that in the next video. So I guess we're going to be starting by figuring out what are the basic steps for training a network in a supervised uh, way, OK? So let me get started by uh, using Colab such that everyone can follow along. Colab.research.google.com. Uh, let's create a new notebook. And this is going to be my MNIST neural net. So we're going to train a network on the amazing data set MNIST. The unsolved MNIST. Say again? The unsolved MNIST. Yep, yep. All right, so first of all, what do we need? So we want to train a network. So I'm going to start by you know, creating my network. Uh, I, I'm going to use PyTorch. So I'm going to do Tor uh, import. I import Torch. And then I do uh, from Torch import and end. Is it going to work? Yeah, looks like it works. Let's just try torch.rand. All right, so we can create our model. All right, so let's make a simple model, which is going to be like uh, a sequential. Uh -huh, auto completion is amazing. Uh, and then here we're going to have, wow, OK, there is already like some suggestions here, right, for how wow. to create. Uh, here they are using a convolutional uh, net. I think we are going to just do a multi-layer perception, like a fully connected layer, just, you know, just to make things easy at the beginning. So we're going to create first a linear mapping. Uh, that goes from the size of the input. So we are going to be using MNIST, which have 28 pixels uh, per side. Uh, since it's an image, you're going to have 28 times 28. And then we are going to go to like some hidden dimension. Uh, for example, we can go like 64 dimensions. Uh, so after the first uh, projection, uh, linear projection, we're going to have the second module, uh, which is going to be our uh, nonlinear function, such that we are going to be learning something. And again, we're going to be just using the uh, Redo for simplicity. Uh, this works well, has very nice uh, performance during training. So we just go with uh, this one. Uh, then I'm going to be adding uh, an extra, uh, an, uh, my first hidden. So we got, with the, first, the first hidden layer has 64 uh, units. I'm going to have a second hidden layer. So I go for this from these um, 64. Uh, 64 linear, uh, 64 hidden layer to another uh, 64. So I go from 64 to 64. Uh, then I get another nonlinear function. And then I'm going to have my output, right? So uh, since we, uh, we, we are training on MNIST, we're going to have 10 different classes. Mm -hmm. and so we're going to have the last uh, module is going to be uh, linear, which is going to be doing a linear projection from this last uh, 64 dimensional hidden layer, which is like my uh, hidden representation, my second hidden representation to, so we go from 64 to 10 because we had 10 digits, right? And so this is my network. All right. Oh, so you just got the, yeah, it's a really, that second really is a E, not a U. Uh-huh. Yeah. There we go. See, awesome. Okay. This is so nice to do pair programming. All right, so we have the network, right? So we may want to use an uh, optimizer. We don't really have to use an optimizer. We can even do these things manually, but you know, uh, we can just use some easier way. So we can just define my optimizer. And so I'm going to have from here, uh, from torch dot, and then I think import optim. Or is it from Torch? From Torch import. I think it's Torch import optim. Optim. Yeah, there you go. All right. 
And so here my optimizer is going to be my optim. We just go with a stochastic gradient descent uh, to which I had to provide my parameters. So I'm going to have my model dot uh, parameters. Okay. And then we can set like a learning rate of, let's say, uh, one hundredth. Okay. So um, then what do we need? So we need like a loss, right? So we're going to need a loss to uh, minimize. So in order to train these parameters. So these parameters here, the optimizer, are going to be basically uh, changing my parameters. But then we have to say, how do we want to change these parameters, right? So we have here define uh, my loss. In this case, we're going to do like our classification task. So we're going to uh, use a, uh, my loss is going to be uh, nn dot microcentropy. All right, cool. And and then I just usually write my my training loop, right? My training loop. I have number of uh, epochs, which is going to be how many times I go through all the data set. Uh, maybe let's do like five times. And then I do uh, four epoch in range number of epochs. Uh, so for every iteration, what do we do? So I'm going to get, uh, uh -huh. so we're going to do like four batch in, uh, I guess we are going to have some training uh, loader, which we haven't defined yet, but we can do that uh, afterwards. We're going to get my X, my input, my image, and then the, the label Y. And so these are going to be extracted from the batch. Uh, so X is going to be an image, right? So X is, is, is going to be something like uh, batch size uh, times my uh, one channel times 28 times 28. But then we actually would like to send this stuff through a linear layer, right? This, this guy over here. So I have to convert uh, this one into just a long vector. So to do that, I simply say x is going to be um, x dot view. I'm going to just retain uh, whatever uh, is the size of the batch, right? So maybe I can just do b for the batch size. It's going to be this guy over here. And so here we have b, and then we have whatever, which is going to be the, uh, the rest, right? So the negative one there, I guess, is uh, going to be multiplying all the other dimensions in this particular case that are not the batch. Yeah. So in this case here, this minus one uh, is going to be equal to 28 times 28, right? Uh, if we would, we would have a color image, there would be also three times 28 and 28. Anyhow, now we have this X, which is going to be like you know, a big matrix with many with B rows, right? Because we have the first size B. And then the length of each of these rows is going to be 28 square. And now we, we do the, the five steps, my, my, my renowned five steps for training a network. So step number one uh, is going to be forward or for, how do you spell forward? Forward. Yeah. And so in the first case, I'm going to have my Y hat, which is the uh, expected uh, output. Actually, it's going to, these are actually the logits, right? So um, let's call this L for logit. So my logit is going to be equal my model to which I provide X, uh, which was reshaped, right? Uh, L, L stands for logit, logit. Uh, then step number two, uh, we're going to be basically compute the objective function. And so in this case, we're going to be measuring uh, the distance between the, uh, you know, we, we can measure, measure how, how well the network it does its task of, of 
basically classifying. And of course, at the beginning, it's going to be doing a very poor job because, well, we haven't trained the network, right? So my objective function, I usually call it J, is going to be my loss, uh, which is the cross entropy we have defined before, uh, to which I provide my L, my logits, and then I provide my Y, which is my, uh, my, 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 my label, right? Don't, then I have my step number three, which is gonna be cleaning uh, the gradient because I would like to compute at number four, compute the partials, partial derivatives, derivatives of J with respect to the parameters. Okay, so here I compute J dot backward, which are computing the which are accumulating, right? So this actually is accumulate, accumulate. So these are accumulating the partial derivatives. Since I don't want to accumulate anything, I make sure at the previous line, I clean up whatever were uh, stored in the, in, the, in, the, in the model's parameters, right? So I can say model uh, and I can say zero grad. Um, my model, parameters have a gradient uh, field, uh, which I can zero in this way, but also we can zero these gradients by uh, using the optimizer and calling this zero grad because the optimizer also contains the same parameters of my model, right? So my model and the optimizer, both of them are containing the parameters. And so both the, the model and the optimizer can uh, clean up the gradients from the previous steps. You're following, right? You're very quiet. Yeah, no, this is great. Okay, okay. All right, thank you. All right, so what is the final step? What's left to do? Apply, apply the updates. We're gonna step, right? Step in the opposite direction of the gradient. And so this is gonna be my optim uh, dot step. Uh, we could have optimizer. also done, say again? Optimizer, because Optim is the library. Ah, yeah, yeah, Optimizer. Yeah, there you go, dot step. Alternatively, we could have actually even have done something like uh, params, uh, equal params minus eta multiplied by params dot grad. Grab and this should have been done within like uh, with torch uh, dot no grab something like this. So this is a, a nine mil gradient update. Yeah, yeah. So this was this is actually what we are doing right now in this uh, optimizer step, right? So par params I could have simply called here uh, before the code params equal model dot parameters. And then here, if we, if I wanted, if I really wanted to be super explicit, I could have simply written down with torch no grad, meaning don't follow anything that is happening in this step because we are actually changing the uh, the, the the values of the, the parameters. But I don't want to make any graph uh, computational graph here. Um, so without following without following the uh, list, like the order of, of execution of operations, I could have simply say my parameters are gonna be the previous parameters minus uh, some you know, uh, learning rate, multiply the uh, gradients which have been computed at this line over here. And at this line over here, we have this value here set to zero. And then this guy over here computes the new uh, gradients, the new partial derivatives, and then sums those values to this value over here and it stores here, right? So this step over here does something like uh, params dot uh, grad. So we never define params, right? So let's say uh, potentially here we could have had uh, params equal model dot parameter param there's, we actually can do that, right? So we can have something like this. 
And then here we call this guy uh, Rams. Um, this is like a, a dictionary or something. So it's not exactly one tensor. Uh, so we, we cannot really do this subtraction here. We should have done like for every item inside these params, right? But let, let's, let's go this way for the moment. Uh, this line over here, it's equivalent to do uh, params dot grad uh, dot underscore zero, which is gonna be clean, zero, setting to zero the, the, the gradients, right? Uh, of the param parameters. Uh, this line over here in the backward simply does params dot grad uh, dot underscore uh, yeah sum and then we have basically um, dj over d params right and so the backward step it's summing the new partial derivatives to the previous, right? So this is the full blown up version, right? Does it work, this stuff? Uh, well, we don't have data, right? So we had to create our data. And for creating the data, I'm going to just uh, shame, shamefully, uh, bashfully copying and pasting like some already written stuff. Okay. Uh, so what do we do here? So here I have my uh, train data is going to be dataset.mnist. Oh, I don't have dataset, right? So I have to uh, import this uh, dataset. So where do I get the dataset? Um, okay, so this one comes from Torch Vision. Uh -huh. It's already here, so nice. Uh, from Torch Vision, import data sets. Cool. So here we have uh, dataset.mnist. I store it in this folder. I want to get the training split. Uh, I actually want to download it. And then I say, I want to convert these whatever information that I have here, which are images. So I guess it's gonna be like a pillow image into tensor. Oh, I use these transforms. So I actually had to import this guy as well. Transforms, there you go. Okay. So we imported that one. We have already defined the model. We have defined the, let's even call this one. We define the loss. Uh, here we have this dataset MNIST. I got the training split. Uh, in this one here, oh, I also use this random split, right? So the random split comes from, it's a very nice utility that allows me to split my training data into the actual training part and the validation part, right? So where do I get this random split? Well, okay. So many things you had to know, right? Uh, <laughs> so we have a torch and someone, some very caring person has made utils. So nice utils and uh, working on data. And we're gonna be importing uh, random splits. Okay, awesome. All right, sweet. So we have random split. Then I have the training loader, which is going to be the uh, item that is going to be providing me the data that is stored in this training uh, um, bucket here, which is going to be a data loader feeding on this train. Uh -huh. We also need a data loader. And also this one comes from here. So we have data loader. And then we also have a validation loader, which is going to be feeding uh, a data loader with the validation data, right? And we choose in this case, a uh, batch size of 32. Uh, so all these parameters here cannot be changed. These are hard code in the code because, because I'm not an engineer. Actually, I am an electrical engineer, but I'm not a software engineer, right? So I just, you know, write it down first it's way. Just, just write and hack. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, random split is not defined because of course I didn't run this one. All right, I had defined the thing that's I don't need the downloading here, no? False, I just download it. Ah, okay, it actually went right. well. All right, so that's it, right? So I'm gonna have five epochs. Um, I'm gonna have this epoch in this range of epochs. Uh, for either, every epoch, which means like the full pass through the data set, I'm gonna get a batch from the training loader. 
uh, and then I'm gonna be getting the X and Y from the batch, which is gonna be the image in the, 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 the class, the label. I reshape the guy, I, uh, in this case here, uh, and then I have my five steps that are always there for uh, supervised learning. We're gonna have the forward step where I compute, in this case, the logit. The logit is the output of the last linear module in your model. So I have my L for logit. Then I have my objective function, my J, which is gonna be, so the loss would be the distance between the uh, network performance to the task, final task. So if you have a high loss, you basically, it basically means your network is far from having achieved the task we are uh, asking to perform. Uh, the objective function, it's equal to the loss in value, but then one is function of the output of the network, and the other one is the function of the parameters of the network. Cool. Um, so again, objective function is step number two. Then step number three is gonna be setting to zero my parameters. Again, this line would not be running because these parameters are some sort of nested dictionary. Uh, so we call just model dot zero, or we can we could even call uh, um, optimizer dot zero grad, which is gonna be exactly the same. Uh, number four, we have the backward, and backward is, what is backward for? Ha. Huh. What does backward do? Question. Um, backwards ca calculating the gradients. No, wrong. Yeah. Um, backward does yes. the accumulation, right? So that's the, the, the part, right? So backward accumulates the new gradients to the previous one, right? So that's what backward does, right? So we have parameters, dot grad, sum, the new uh, like the new uh, partial derivatives, right? And so since we don't want to keep uh, all these, uh, you know, this summation, I just want the latest, uh, the latest gradients such that I can do stochastic gradient descent. I have this line before, right? So this line is not always necessary. Uh, it's necessary if I want to compute the partials, right? Rather than accumulate, because backward does the accumulation. Uh, why does PyTorch uh, accumulate rather than compute? Because you can do so many more interesting things that we won't see today, but maybe in next lesson. Finally, uh, and so the last part, which is the, the learning part, uh, is gonna be the change of parameters in order to minimize the objective function, right? Cool. We want to see what the loss is doing. Ah, right? ah yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're right. If I forgot about that. See? Okay. Every time, you have to remember every... I mean, I, I always remember my five steps, right? Yeah. But there are many things you have to keep in mind. Uh, like, okay, let's plot. Yeah, so you want to you wanna plot that, but you also... I think, I think when people go wrong sometimes is uh, this J, that's a graph, right? So it's a lot of memory attached to that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If so you, uh, if you don't attach as well, you're gonna start to bleed memory in the program. So I think I can do just item. So item should give me like the, um, the the value of a of um uh, of the specific scalar tensor, right? So actually, here we can do something like um, epoch, and then we have e. Wait, can you scroll up a little bit? Yeah, I can scroll up. What's up? Great. Uh, epoch. Plus one, duck, and then we have training uh, loss. And so in this case, I'm actually gonna say training loss because it's gonna be showing the, how well the network does, right? Although I'm gonna plot the objective function, but again, they, they have the same value, right? So yeah, and then item, item is a function, so you gotta put a parenthesis. Oh, oh, okay, I didn't know. All right. Okay. And I think in, in addition to this, like, I think um, the gradients, the loss changes so quickly that if you were just, you know, print this out, you'll, you'll see the pattern overall, but usually oh, people do so is they save the last 10 or something, and then they can do a rolling average, right? But in this case, it's easier to just, we'll just do the, the single oh, loss okay. number. No, you're right. You're right. I can do the average over the batch, right? So we have here, uh, losses equal... Uh, list. Okay, you're right. And so here I can just compute my 
uh, losses dot append. Uh, I can I, I can append my j dot item, and then here is gonna be epoch blah, and I'm gonna be calling torch. Um, the j is gonna be a list right now. Torch tensor of this guy here dot mean. Okay, and let's put like dot two f. Sounds good. So the two F there is to print two decimals for that number in the, or, or, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah I'm just pr plot, plotting two, uh, two decimals, otherwise it becomes too annoying. And also a key that you did there, which is great, is uh, you called dot item before putting into that array. Um, yes, if yeah. you didn't do that, you would run out of memory very quickly because every batch would store a copy of the, the graph. Yep, uh, so this is my training step. Uh, and then I'm going to have something similar. So I just copy and paste. But do, what do we copy? So I don't care about this stuff. I don't care about this one. I don't care about this one. I just care about these two lines, I think. I just like to compute the loss, right? So let's go here. So this was my training step. So my training and validation. Oops. All right. Okay, copy. I'm not going too fast, right? Or too slow? That's no, great. Okay. So I mean, you're so the for the validation loop, we're literally just doing the same thing. I think sometimes you might want to talk about like accuracy or something like that, but in this case, we're just gonna keep doing the the, the loss. Ah, ah, okay. So um, in here, we would like to do all of this, uh, this forward. I don't want to have any gradient, so I had to do it with torch dot no grad yeah so with this guy here we don't compute the, the gradients such that j is just a tensor it's not gonna be it doesn't have any graph connected right i want to append the item uh here i guess oh okay and then I'm gonna be printing the validation loss. Uh oh. Okay. Um, this is validation, validation loss, and I'm gonna have my torch tensor J. No, it's not J. It's gonna be losses, right? What happened here? Oh my God. Fantastic. So before I just show you the last item, not the mean. See? See, losses, so many typos. Uh, see, how do you catch these annoying things? Like, you can't. I, I wish. <laughs> you just I have wish, to run and wait. Oh my God. I wish someone actually would have done like some bullet, bullet, boiler plating, right? Ah, okay. Uh, so losses is the um, list I created here, right? Losses, list. I append items to this, uh, yeah, items <laughs> to this uh, list. And then here I generate a tensor from this list and I compute the mean of the tensor, right? So before I was just plotting the uh, la latest J, right? The, the one, the, the last one computed. Uh, that This should be it for this network. Uh, okay. Hmm. Oh, oh, now it's 124. <laughs> Oops. Okay, now it makes more sense, right? So before we had such a tiny, uh, such a tiny uh, loss because we were just checking the loss of the last batch, right? That's why it was like so great. Yeah. Uh, and never mind. Ne nevertheless, we we get down to uh, training loss 26, validation 24. So we are not yet uh, overfitting, right? So, okay, so it's great. So now this collab, I think, has a GPU on it. So what does it take to get this code running in GPUs? Uh-huh, I don't know. Let, let's figure out. I actually never tried. So I think, first of all, I have to change the runtime. Uh, change runtime type, and then I have to request a GPU. And that's it. Allocating, connecting, installing, connected. Yeah, looks like we are, uh, it's running.
I don't know. Let's see if it works. So let's re-execute this guy. Uh, and then I'm going to be checking whether this one works. So I'm going to do rand 5. And then I do CUDA. Let's see if it works. OK, looks correct, right? So this is my tensor, which is living in the GPU, right? So um, the GPU uh, is a graphic processing unit, right? So it stays for graphic processing unit. It's the graphic card uh, of a machine, which uh, task uh, used to be computing the, uh, the coordinates of the triangles for doing rendering of 3D graphics, right? For, for doing rendering of 3D video games. Uh, the cool part is that all these shapes, all these triangles, uh, coordinates are independent from each other, right? And so each uh, triangle coordinate can be uh, computed in parallel. You don't have to compute them sequentially. The CPU, actually, instead, uh, is always computing things in a, in, a, in, a, in a sequence, right? And even if you're not doing anything, like right now, I'm not doing anything, the, the, the CPU has to do something. So it's in idle. And idle is like a spinning hamster on the on the wheel, which is, it I always had to spin. If you stop it, the, the computer is, is <laughs> done. Um, so yeah, you, so you have these CPUs that are just running forever in a sequential way. Uh, these graphic cards instead are used to make uh, very stupid computations, like it's just the coordinate of a triangle, but they can do many of them all together, right? Uh, and we can use this uh, because when we never, whenever we have a neural net, we have many, 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 many neurons. And all of these neurons are independent from each other in the same, you know, in the same layer. And so we can compute all these values, which are, you know, just multiplications and additions uh, together. And it should speed up things up. Um, it should speed things up if, uh, you know, we are not under the overhead of moving things uh, back and forth in memory. Uh, and in this case, it would be probably the case because our model is very tiny. Um, and so it doesn't make sense, but nevertheless, I want to show that PyTorch uh, allows you to use the, uh, the, the a GPU in order to parallelize computations, right? So do we change anything here? No, we don't change. Oh, data set not found because of course we changed machine. So we had to do download true. Okay, there we go. Pam, 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 done, yay. Uh, we had this model here. Uh, I think we can go with the, the fancy one. Let's go with the fancy model. Um, I just, uh, oh, huh, okay, I had to do something, I think. So here, my model, uh, when I generate my model, this model lives on the CPU, but I want to, uh, I wanted to move it to my GPU. And so I had to add dot CUDA. And so in this case, the model is generated and then is actually moved to the uh, it's called device memory. Uh, GPU memory is called the device memory. Anyhow, so we have our model, it's sent to CUDA, then I do exactly the same stuff here, I don't change anything, I define my loss as before. Uh, here I need to do something, uh, namely, so I have to send my X, is gonna be going to CUDA, and then also my Y has to go to CUDA. All right, so I set, I sent the X to CUDA, I sent the, the Y to the device memory. Other things, I had to do the same here. So here, I also have this guy has to go to CUDA. Uh, and then this Y has to go there. CUDA. All right, I think that should be it. So I had to send the tensors, uh, the Y and the X, to the device memory, the model is already living there, such that all the processing is done in the same, uh, you know, in the same uh, piece of hardware. Let's see if it works. Aha! Uh -huh. What happened? Expect the device CPU, but got device CUDA. Why? What's going on? So why is already CPU? This guy here should go to CPU. See, errors. I wish this stuff was automatic, but okay, never mind. Uh, okay, distractions, distraction errors. Okay, so now this uh, L, which is the logit, um, I compute the argmax that's in the GPU, then I move it to the CPU. Um, 
and then I just do this the whole thing. So I think the the last bit I want to show uh, is the how to make a, the model a little bit more powerful and convert this current model into a uh, residual connection con connected model um, to show like the full flexibility of PyTorch here. So in this case, I made my model this way. If I'd like to make a residual connection, uh, basically I would like to go from the first output of this guy directly into this guy over here or maybe into this one we we don't know we can we can just use the we can assume that the dropout is connected to the uh the intermediate layer maybe um, or or we can just consider the dropout connected to the input of this guy maybe so let's say i'd like to bypass this um layer sometimes if well we i'd like to bypass this guy with a residual connection. So let's see how I can do this, right? So wait, why, why would you want to do that? Like why, what is a residual connection by so the, the residual connection basically are connections that are going, so my the input to the dropout module would be the output of the first, uh, of the first, um, the output of the first hidden layer is gonna be sum to the output of my second hidden layer. In this way, uh, we are gonna have, um, the network can decide not to use part of this. And like the network can decide to set, for example, the biases of a few of these items to uh, negative numbers, such that they are getting completely erased by the ReLU. And therefore you're gonna get a direct connection from the first hidden layer, this one, the 64, down to the output layer, which is going to be the one that maps the 64 to 10, right? So in this case, the, the, we, we can just let the, the optimizer figure out whether it wants to be using all the hidden layers, the, hidden, the second hidden layer, or it wants to skip a few units. So here we're going to see, we're going to define, uh, define a more flexible model. So in this case, I'm going to have my uh, class and it's going to be my model, uh, res, res model, well, res net. Uh, this is from the uh, model module. Okay. Then we're going to have uh, def uh, init self. I don't want to send any parameter here. So I'm gonna create my first uh, linear transformation, which is not a linear transformation, it's a fine transformation, but okay. Uh, Torch calls it linear, which is not. Uh, anyhow, nn.linear, which should be a fine from 28 square to the 64 we said before. Uh, then I have my second affine transformation, which is gonna be uh, linear going from 64 to 64. And then it's going to be my output uh, transformation, which is going to be going from uh, 64 to 10 guys. Right? Then I have uh, defined my forward uh, self, and then I have my input X. What does it do on this one? So I'm going to call my first H. Let's call this is H1. Uh, it's going to be uh, an end dot. Um, do, can we do that? F functional dot, yes, we can do relu of my L1 to which we send X. Then so you, have to, you have to also attach the layers to self dot. Yeah, you're right. Self dot, yeah. Then I have my second hidden layer is going to be an n dot functional dot relu. Oh, we want also the dropout, right? Do equal an n dot dropout. We said 0 0.1. So this is my first hidden, this is second hidden. And, and the input is going to be self 
dot L2 to which I send my H1. And then we had the ops. And then we had the final one, the dropout. Okay, output. So this is gonna be myself dot dropout uh, H2 would be just a sequential like before. But instead I'm gonna say H2 plus H1 such that if H2 is not necessary, the network can set the bias of this module to very negative values such that the ReLU is gonna be setting to zero anything here. So H2 is gonna be zero. And so potentially the network can decide to completely uh, remove this H2 term and then we just have the H1 term, right? And so this is my dropout volume. And then we have the uh, whatever final logit. Logit uh, is gonna be the final self uh, L3 of the dropout mask and uh, with return logit. Logit maybe with the S, okay? So this is my uh, network. So if I if I would have put here just H2 without H1, like if I would do like this, uh, this is exactly the same model uh, defined here. But if I use this more flexible, uh, you know, form, I can just make a residual connection by just typing plus H1. They are completely equivalent, but I wouldn't be able to do H plus 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 this H1 here. All right, and then. And yeah. then the final thing is on the inits, all those uh, layers. Into oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, you're right. So here we had to do super uh, dot init like this, right? Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Looks correct. So we had to do model, model equal my rest net. Bam. Yes. Okay. Uh, again, I had to define this guy, the, the mod optimizer. Let's save these values for later. Okay. So here we have this model here, um, the output of the previous one. Then we can run this new one. Let's see how it goes. So the ResNet trains much faster than the uh, the other guy, right? So this value here is the average for, for the first uh, epoch. Uh, this one is also the average loss, training loss for the first epoch. And it's right. absolutely faster, right? So by doing this small, tiny little change here, plus blah, we gain incredibly, incredibly into speed, right? You know why? So the speed of the, the the speed of learning, the learning speed for every layer, the 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 low you go in the hierarchy, like towards the input, and the slower they they train, they, they change, right? So the values up in the hierarchy, close to the output. So the network's input is in the bottom, and then we have layers, and the output of the network is on top because you go up up in the hierarchy, right? So this is the output. So this is the head of the network. So here we have the gradients. Uh, that are very close to your layers. So these layers get the gradient directly from your from your loss, from your objective function. So these ones are changing, 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 changing. The gradient goes down, gets multiplied by the intermediate uh, weights, which are usually smaller than one. Uh, so they kind of shrink this gradient. And then when it comes here, the gradient is very tiny. And so these weights here change very slowly, right? Uh, by adding this connection here, you're gonna get basically like like lines, hi highways going down. That's why these are there is a paper called high, high, Highway Networks they, that was uh, uh, preceding the the the, the ResNet. Uh, they are doing the same thing, but here basically you get gradients that are able to change quickly the the values down uh, in the in the hierarchy, right? So I think this is the whole code. We have imports, we have the data we want to play with, we define a simple model, we define a model with, uh, you know, safe, safer, safer model, you know, that against, you know, just memorization, which is the overfitting part. Then we use a model which is, you know, super flexible, you can do anything you want. Uh, we define an optimizer, which is not necessary, but it's just a convenient way to 
do that kind of uh, uh, like nested update of uh, all the parameters in the model. We define a loss, which is defining an objective function, which is going to be used to update the parameters. And then here we have my, my training loop and the validation loop. So we go through the uh, data set a few times and one epoch means once uh, one pass through the data set, we create a loss and accuracy list that allow me to uh, keep trace of the value of the loss and the accuracy during the training and validation loop. I set my model to train. Then here I get my batch from my training loader. X and Y are, uh, are getting you know, the, out from the batch. I reshape my uh, X such that it goes from an image, which is 28 by 28, into just a vector, which is 28 square. Uh, and then I have my five points for the training, supervised training, which is always there. So first point, we have the forward, where I compute the logits. The second point is going to be the computation of the objective function. Then I clean up the gradient. You can do it in several ways, but basically it's simply setting to zero the grad of the parameters. Uh, then I accumulate the new partial derivatives of the objective function with respect to the parameters. Uh, then I use the optimizer in order to step in the opposite direction of the gradient. So finally, I log shift and we have the losses are going to be this J, which I remove the gradient. So we don't keep the, the whole uh, <laughs> computational graph with us. Then I compute the accuracy. Uh, I print the epoch number, the training loss and the training accuracy. I repeat everything for the uh, evaluation uh, validation part where I had to set the model into evaluation mode because I used the dropout, which is sensitive to the mode in which you set the network. Again, my, my list for keeping trace of loss and accuracy. Then I get my batch. I resize my input into a vector. I ask Torch, please, please, please don't keep trace of gradients and graphs and whatever. Just just compute the final outcome. I don't want. I don't want to do anything with that output. And so here I compute my logits without the computational graph. Uh, here I compute my objective function the same way. So I just have points one and two, right? So these are the two points that I use the same from before. Three, four, and five are only specific to training. I append the the, the objective function. I compute the accuracy and I print. And that was it. So we just train a supervised network to recognize handwritten digits. Tune in to the next episode to see how we can do the same thing with PyTorch Lightning. I remove a lot of the boilerplate code and get very convenient features for free.